Hey, what's going on? Chris here again, doing another 4K Blu-ray review. I'm going to do it on Pacific Rim Uprising, which I had the opportunity to pick up earlier today. Um, just finished watching it. Uh, quick tech specs. Uh, the film was shot uh, digitally on the Aria Alexa. It was finished with a 2K digital intermediate. Uh, visual effects were also finished at 2K. Um, right out of the gate, the video transfer, perfect 5 out of 5. Um, it's a BD100 also, so you get a consistently high video bit rate. Um, there's no uh, compression artifacts, no visual anomalies like color banding. Um, it's it's just a really smooth and strong presentation from start to finish. Um, the HDR is very good. It's everything that you're looking for as far as um, you know, big budget visual effects heavy um, action films go. Uh, you get really bright specular highlights. You get really great detail in those highlights. Uh, the contrast is really excellent. You know, it's pretty much cranked up to a 10 with a release like this. Um, greens, blues, purples, pinks, any sort of neon colors all pop off the screen. They're very vivid, they're deep, they're vibrant, very saturated. Uh, for this type of film that it is, you know, it's, it's definitely taken advantage of the HDR format in a very um, stylish, stylistic um, sense, I guess. Um, Black levels look really good too. They're very deep, very dark. Uh, I didn't really notice any black crush, so you're still getting very good detail in those black levels. Um, creates a nice three-dimensional, very poppy looking image. Uh, you get a lot of those overhead wide angle shots in this film where you can really get a good sense of foreground and background separation. Um, so yeah, again, video quality is a perfect five out of five. Audio quality, I would say is a four out of five. It's a pretty good Atmos track. Uh, you've got to turn the volume up a little bit to really take advantage of it, which is a little surprising considering the type of film that it is. There's a lot of action sequences, and it's uh, kind of odd because it's not super bass heavy. Um, you can get a pretty good, decent amount of uh, low frequency effects. Um, uh, you know, there's still a pretty decent amount of sound that goes throughout the room, uh, but compared to like other uh, strong big budget action movies, I'd actually say that this is a little bit more on the milder side, especially compared to other modern action movies that are, you know, within that same genre. Um, so yeah, video quality, perfect 5 out of 5. The audio quality, I would give a 4 out of 5. The film itself, wasn't a fan. Like the original film, uh, a huge fan of Guillermo del Toro. I uh, was really disappointed when he decided not to take on the directing give, gig for this, but I understand considering, you know, his creative investment at the time was in The Shape of Water. Um, Stephen DeKnight directed it, directed it uh, his first feature film. He's otherwise been involved in television productions. Uh, I don't mean for this to sound, you know, really rude or condescending, but he should probably stick with the TV field because uh, this film, despite having, you know, you know the large budget effects and, and everything like that, visually, it just doesn't hold a candle to the original film. And I don't just mean that because it's not as vibrant or colorful. It just doesn't have the visual inventiveness. Um, it's almost like an overproduced uh, um, television show in a way. Like imagine a TV show just with like a really large budget. Um, the camera work is is kind of sloppy. They try to produce some Dutch angles here and there, but they just come off very unfocused and, and very noticeable. Um, there's really no interesting composition or, or framework going on. Um, and despite, you know, having a lot more daytime scenes compared to, to the first film where it was mostly taking place at night, at least with the first film, uh, you know, Del Toro was going with a specific aesthetic in mind where he was kind of replicating Richard Corbin's 80s heavy metal artwork style, this sort of acid trip, sort of, you know, visually stimulating, kind of get inside of your brain and just punish it for two hours in the best way possible. This just really doesn't have any of that. Um, doesn't really take too much advantage of the set designs. The costume work looks cheap. Uh, the Jaeger designs are uninspired. The action sequences are, are weightless and boring. Uh, the film itself is very campy and in a lot of ways derivative uh, uh, compared to the first film. And I mean that because they kind of try to replicate a couple of the things. John Boyega's character gives, you know, that, you know, raw, raw inspiring speech that Idris Elba's character gives at the end of the first film. Uh, the one girl, I forget her name, unfortunately, you know, when she enters the Shatter Dome for the first time, she starts naming off the Jaegers in the same way that uh, Charlie Hunnam's character did in the first film when he first saw Cherno Alpha, uh, uh, Stryker Eureka, and, and uh, Cherno Alpha, uh, not Cherno Alpha, I just uh, mentioned that one, Crimson Typhoon, the Chinese Jaeger. So uh, it replicates a lot of the same things from the first film. Uh, Charlie Day is annoying. I mean, I don't even find him funny remotely. 
uh, I don't even think he's funny and it's, it's always sunny. He's one of the weaker characters, so I'm not a fan of him as an actor. Um, it's just a sloppy, derivative, very boring film. The humor doesn't work. It just cringeworthy. Uh, the film also kind of insults Rinko Kikuchi. She deserved a lot better. If you've seen the film, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you haven't and you have seen the first film and you're looking forward to her reprising her role, uh, keep your expectations in check because they, they do a pretty significant disservice to her and it's really unfortunate. Um, Scott Eastwood couldn't really act his way out of a paper bag. I think one way to know if you're, if a movie is going to suck nowadays is if he's cast in it. Sorry to be that blunt, but, you know, pretty much everything he's been featured in today so far has just been, you know, thumbs down all the way. Uh, he just doesn't have the acting range. That's his nepotism at work, which, you know, has gotten him the gigs that he's gotten since, you know, Clint Eastwood obviously being his father. Um, so yeah, if uh, you're a fan of the first film, I'm sure you'll probably pick up the uh, Pacific Rim Uprising just to add it to your collection. Uh, if you weren't really a huge fan of the first film and you're kind of on the fence, I would say, um, you know, avoid spending the money, even if though, even though the transfers is very, very good. Um, if you're free to spend whatever you want, you're like me and you like collecting everything, because if you want a little bit of perspective for, for uh, how gung-ho I am about the 4K format, I even own Agent 47 Hitman on 4K Blu-ray, and that movie is one of the worst movies in, in the history of mankind, in my opinion. Um, but the really unfortunate thing is, is uh, with Pacific Rim Uprising, I'm trying to think, and off the top of my head, this might actually be uh, the worst film I've seen in 2018 that was made in 2018, or at least got a release in 2018. Um, to say I'm extremely disappointed in it is a, a, a massive understatement. Again, it's unfortunate that Del Toro couldn't do the directorial duties for this. I understand why he didn't. But if they couldn't instill their faith in a more competent filmmaker to, to helm the sequel, they should have just scrapped it all together. Uh, with as bad as this turned out, I don't want a third film at all. Just bury this underneath the dirt and forget it ever happened. It's, it's pretty cringeworthy. Uh, there's really no entertainment value in it whatsoever, despite the gargantuous uh, sizes of both the Jaegers and the Kaijus, the action sequences just do not have the visual creativity that the first film had. So yeah, uh, but purely on just a, a, a disc um, analysis level, uh, video quality is, is perfect. It's a perfect transfer, I'll give it that. Universal did, did the damn thing with the, with the video encoded, it's, it's very, very good. And the audio, like I said, you know, 4.0. Uh, you know, solid four. Um, could have been better, I guess. Could have had a little bit more, uh, um, you know, kick to it, a little bit more uh, visceralness to it, but uh, it gets the job done, I suppose. Um, but yeah, other than that, not a very good film. Um, only pick it up, I guess, if, if you're a hardcore collector, but other than that, you can definitely afford to skip this one. All right, guys, I'll see you.